a robust animal walked through a shallow lagoon in Tanzania. It was neither a porcupine nor a mammal, but it had spikes that resembled porcupine quills as protection. Instead, it was a 152-million-year-old dinosaur named Kentrosaurus. Due to its many appearances in paleomedia, it's recently gained a lot of popularity. Still, paleontologists have been keeping an eye on the Kentrosaurus for a while. In 1909, a German expedition found several fossils in the Tendaguru Foundation in southeastern Tanzania. Due to its thorny defenses, the Stegosaurus was quickly given its name, which means the pointed lizard, based on the number of fossils found. Even though it had spikes like other Stegosaurus, it was smaller than most of its relatives, but by no means small, although the majority of them did reach a length of 4.5 meters, or 15 feet, and weighed between 700 and 1,600 kilos, or 1,500, or 1,500, and 3,500 pounds. Even though it is on the smaller end of the Stegosaurus spectrum, there is evidence that larger ones existed, but their exact size is still unknown. The Kentrosaurus kept some of the classic Stegosaurus body features, such as a long tail, an enlarged flat skull, and strong thick limbs, which made it proportionately quite stocky. Also, it seems that there were two different kinds of Kentrosaurus, with one being stronger than the other. This is probably due to the sexual dimorphism, which means that males are usually stronger than females. In addition to its long tail and hind legs that were longer than its front legs, the structure of the Kentrosaurus was also very important. The Kentrosaurus' center of mass was located far back on its body, in front of its hips. Some people think it might have been able to stand like a tripod, which would have let it eat mid-level plants or get up higher to see predators better. Despite being equipped with spikes and plates in front of it, the Kentrosaurus was very agile because of the way its weight was distributed and its strong legs. This gave it an alternative way out. Even so, the Kentrosaurus wasn't completely defenseless when it came under attack by a predator it couldn't escape. It was well protected by its striking armor, which was made up of a row of bony osteoderm plates that turned into two rows of huge spikes along its back and tail. It also had shoulder spikes, which was a unique feature. With these spikes on its lower half and shoulders, predators were less likely to attack from the side or from behind. Larger theropods would have been scared off by the spikes, which were sometimes longer than two feet or 0.6 meters. In addition, the Kentrosaurus had another trick up its sleeve. The largest spikes on its body were on its longer tail. Also, the tail had at least 40 vertebrae, which made it very flexible, and let the Kentrosaurus use its tail spikes, called the Thurgomizer, as a huge flail. Research shows that it may have been able to swing its tail at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. At this speed, it can either strike predators quickly or hit them hard. If it can make quick strikes, it would have torn predators apart, cutting and slashing soft tissue and possibly breaking less strong bones. Instead, if it had used focused power blows, it would have been able to break thick leg bones of small and medium-sized theropods with only blunt force trauma, and it might have been able to knock out giant theropods as well. This would have been important because it lived in an area where there were a lot of theropods. Because it had spikes on its shoulders, it may have been capable of running at predators and turning towards them to pierce them with the spikes. The Kentrosaurus was not to be taken lightly because it could kill, and the fact that it has such deadly weapons may make people think it has a desire for blood. Like other members of its family, it was an herbivore. It had a small head and a strong beak, which helped it eat low-lying plants. Its mouth was built in such a way that it barely chewed its food and ate a lot of plants whole. As we've already said, it might have been able to stand up on its back legs. This would have let it eat mid-height plants, giving it an advantage over other herbivores of the same size. Kentrosaurus may have had an edge over other herbivorous dinosaurs because it may have lived in groups or herds. Fossil evidence backs up this conclusion. This would have given even more protection through security and identification, and the plates may have also played a part. Like many other stegosaurians, the Kentrosaurus has a large number of plates on its front body. Some paleontologists believe that these groups of dinosaurs utilized these plates to identify one another, which would have been beneficial when migrating in groups. Paleontologists have looked at two Kentrosaurus brains that are almost completely intact and found that the dinosaur probably wasn't very smart when it came to how to interact with other animals. It lived near the end of the Jurassic period. It lived in three different places, lagoons, coastal plains, and interior regions. Researchers looked at what would have been the lagoons and coastal plains, 
They found that there wasn't much plant life in these areas, but that there were more conifers in the interior. It seems that herbivores like the Kentrosaurus like these densely forested interior regions, but this made these places good for theropods as well, and there were many of them. It's thought that as many as nine theropods, including Dilophosaurus and Ostafricosaurus, shared its habitat. Several fossils show that the African Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus species may have lived with the Kentrosaurus and hunted it. If this is the case, the spikes are even more important, and the sheer number of theropods in the area may have helped the Kentrosaurus grow quickly, as its bones show it grew much faster than its relatives. Even though theropods seem to rule the world, this would have decreased the amount of time that young dinosaurs were completely defenseless. There were also seven fully known sauropods, two of which were the Big Giraffian and the Dinherosaurus, which had a short neck. In these areas, there are also pterosaurs, mammals, crocodiles, amphibians, and fish that are not dinosaurs. From a faunal point of view, this ecosystem was similar to the Morrison information in North America, according to many. Intriguingly, old Kentrosaurus footprints show that the dinosaur walked on its toes like modern birds. Scientists have learned a lot about the Kentrosaurus by looking at its well-preserved skeletons. By looking at the Kentrosaurus's bones and teeth, scientists have been able to figure out what the dinosaur ate. It ate mostly ferns and other low-growing plants. Even though the Kentrosaurus was very interesting in many ways, it didn't survive the Cretaceous period. It seems to have gone extinct, along with a large number of other Stegosaurus. Scientists can't agree on what exactly killed off the Kentrosaurus or many other dinosaur species. The extinction of the Kentrosaurus, like many other dinosaur species, is still a subject of scientific debate, and there's no consensus of the exact cause, but there are different ideas about what might have killed off the Kentrosaurus and other dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. One theory is that a massive asteroid impact caused a global environmental catastrophe, leading to a sudden and dramatic change in climate. This event may have caused widespread wildfires, acid rain, and long periods of darkness, which messed up the food chain and led to the extinction of many dinosaur species, including the Kentrosaurus. Another idea is that volcanoes may have caused a similar disaster in the environment that killed off the dinosaurs. This theory says that huge volcanic eruptions put a lot of greenhouse gases into the air. This could have caused global warming and acid rain, which could have killed the Kentrosaurus and other dinosaurs. Finally, some scientists believe that gradual changes in the environment, such as changes in sea level or the spread of new plant species, may have played a role in the extinction of the Kentrosaurus and other dinosaurs. Because of these changes, it might have been harder for the Kentrosaurus to find food and stay alive in their habitats, which could have led to their extinction. In conclusion, the exact reason why the Kentrosaurus and other dinosaurs went extinct during the Cretaceous period is still unknown. However, it is likely that a number of factors such as changes in the climate and major disasters were to blame. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell icon for more interesting videos. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.